But now, look, let's get into it because the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, is waiting for us, joining us from our Canberra studio. Treasurer, good evening. Thank you for your time. And can I thank you, Scott Morrison, Greg Hunt, and on behalf of many people out there for the tremendous job you've done. It is bearing fruit on the figures, negative growth, and the deaths as a proportion of the number of cases, 0.41%. So you're making progress. More to be made, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, these are very difficult times for so many Australian families. Good to be with you, Alan. Good to be with you, Richo. But Australia is fighting a war on two fronts. We face simultaneously a health and an economic crisis. But as you can see from the leadership of Scott Morrison and the entire team, Australians know that we've got their backs. Just Josh, just one point. I mean, they always say government doesn't consult and you don't listen to anybody, you don't talk to people. Just explain to our, our viewers what happened that night when you put the package together, because you spoke, I know, personally, to four of the biggest employers in the country. Well, that's true, Alan. Um, when we were working on the JobKeeper package, uh, we wanted to talk to the business leaders uh, who tragically uh, were closing their doors and laying off their staff. Uh, and so I did speak to, to a number of them, Justin Hems, uh, Solly Liu, uh, and I also spoke um, to Rob Scott at West Farmers and Richard Murray at JB Hi-Fi. Between them, they employ around 150,000 Australians. And through no fault of them, no fault of their staff, uh, but as a result of this global pandemic, uh, they had to close their doors. And they were pretty emotional about it in many cases, and we knew then um, that, of course, we had to continue to support the employee. Yeah, Josh... Uh, uh, supporting the employee has, generally speaking, been, been a, a, a labour a, a trait, um, but uh, you guys have stepped up pretty well. It's very hard as a labour person to complain. Josh, you sh I think you should switch, mate. I think we're, re we're ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, the best thing you can do uh, for, for someone out there is to help them get a job. And that's what our focus has been, Richo, all along, is to keep Australians in jobs and businesses in business. And the JobKeeper payment is designed to keep the employer and the employee formally connected so that when we get to the other side of this coronavirus crisis, that we can bounce back stronger than ever. And having those discussions with the business leaders, um, it was really important because we wanted them to receive the JobKeeper payment and then use their existing payroll systems, which is the most efficient and effective way, to then pass that money through to their employees. And that's what now, was Josh, really helpful on that, from those conversations. Josh, on that, though, on that, the 750 bucks starts from Monday. That's from the beginning of this week. But, and the employer is to pay that money. Now, they don't get it back until May... There are many employers who are saying to me, we can't survive until May. And can I just, I'll ask a double barrel question here. Then, of course, there's the issue of people saying, well, hang on, I'm a full time employee. I've worked my backside off for God knows how long. I'm only getting the same amount as the bloke who works five hours a week, who's a casual, the part timer. Why were they all, everyone's treated the same? It's almost like a Greens uh, policy here, uniform uniform wage for everybody. So on the first instance, how does the employer manage if he doesn't have the dough? And why are we paying everybody the same? Well, the reason why this policy was designed that way uh, was because it's the most efficient and effective way to get the money to people with a flat payment. But also it's a very Australian way, Rich, uh, um, Alan, that everyone gets their $1,500 regardless of their wage. Now, in relation to somebody in the retail space or the hospitality space or the tourism space, the $1,500 a fortnight is nearly a full replacement wage, about 100% of the median wage. Now, in other sectors, it might be around 70% of the median wage. And in those retail and hospitality sectors, that's where people have been hit hardest. We've got obviously lots of casuals in that, in that space, lots of part-timers as well as full-timers. And we decided to have um, the most efficient and effective mechanism through the existing tax system. And Scott Morrison was very, very strong about that. We have to use our, our existing systems to get the money out. And that's why we did it that way. All right. Now, Josh, let me just let me take this point, uh, which is, I suppose, a very simple point. There is a business 
and it closed down because there has been, mm. the economy's gone into a coma. So the business closes down, yeah. the employees are all put off and the businessman decides, look, I'm not going to go back, I mean, it's too much hassle, bugger it, I've had enough. Now, this is to connect the employee with the employer. What about that bloke that's been put off because the employer doesn't want to reopen? You can't connect him. Does that employee who's lost his job get the 750 bucks? Well, they've got to be connected to their employer and their employer can have stood them down, so they may have closed their doors. But unless that employer is in liquidation, um, then that employer hopefully will reopen once the coronavirus no, he said he won't. Uh, is over. He said he won't. He, but he well, said he won't, Josh, well, if he, he sets out of a job. He, he, says, he, he says he won't well, reopen, in, in, so the bloke's out of a job. Does yep. he get his 750 or does he go to 550 for New Start? Well, if that business is not reopening and that relationship is not continuing, then the JobKeeper um, payment does not apply. But you will find in many cases, in overwhelmingly the vast majority of cases, um, you've got businesses that have had to close because of the health-related restrictions that have you know, reduced um, social gatherings very dramatically. And in those circumstances, that business wants to reopen on the other side of the coronavirus. And this is what the JobKeeper payment is designed to help. And we're talking about 6 million workers who could benefit from this particular scheme. And, Alan, I know, on Monday night... Mm. We've already seen more than 400,000 yeah, businesses register their interest. But, Josh, there are two points. But, but I just wonder how many businesses country. will be left. I mean, I can see, it. I can see that you're, you're trying to do the right thing, but, you know, there, there's going to be an awful yeah. lot of businesses closed who just aren't going to reopen. Well, our absolute commitment is to get as many of them to reopen as possible. That's why we have spent... $320 billion. That's more than 16% of GDP. I understand that. That's more than the that, that's more than the United States. That's more in terms of you know the percentage of GDP of direct support. It's more than so many other countries. Alan, because this is unprecedented what we're facing. Mm. So we have in um undertaken a series of measures that are unprecedented in scope. We want to keep as think... many Australians in a job. Sure. Josh, no one's criticising you here. I'm just simply saying I think Graham is right. You've had massive applications from those employers, over 300,000. Sure. But there are 2.2 million small businesses in this country. And there are many of these people who have decided it's too much and they're not coming back. And there's a whole heap of people out there who've got to pay their mortgage, they've got to pay their energy, they've got to pay their electric light bill. And they do that, what, on 550 bucks a week? It's, it's When you've been on 80,000 or 90,000 a year... It's pretty tough stuff. There's going to be a lot of social consequences as a result of this whole coronavirus episode. You're not wrong about yeah, that. And, I mean, can I just say, too, been, it's not been, just a matter of yep. looking at the economics of it. You've also got to look at, at what's going to happen with, with the domestic situations of a lot of people. Because when, when you get really strong financial pressure, it puts enormous pressure on relationships. And, and you find then a lot break down, that's when you get violence, that's when you get real problems. So we're not just facing here a money problem. This is a societal problem that's really, really big. I, look, Richo, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm absolutely concerned about people's wellbeing, and so is Scott Morrison, and that's why we announced just the other day over $1 billion dollars of additional health measures, including greater support for um, domestic violence support services, um, greater support for mental health and wellbeing services. Uh, we are absolutely focused on that human challenge as well as that economic challenge. But I want to say to you and all your viewers tonight that our support for small businesses is not just the JobKeeper payment, it's actually cash payments up to $100,000. There are wage subsidies for 117,000 apprentices. We've partnered with banks like the CBA, with Matt Komen, to co-guarantee loans to small businesses of up to $250,000 with no interest payments for the first six months, all designed to help those small businesses get back on their feet. 
And you know that JobKeeper mm. payment, it's available to sole traders. So that that yeah. that plumber, that carpenter, that Sparky, they're all going to be able to access that JobKeeper okay. payment so that they uh, can uh, get Josh, to the other before, side. Josh, Josh, just before we go, I was surprised when the sure. Prime Minister announced the messaging service WhatsApp. And he gave credit to this Canon Brooks and his technology company, Atlassian. <laughs> now, I nearly choked. Are you aware that Atlassian allegedly earns $1 billion a year in revenue and has reportedly structured so as to pay no corporate tax in Australia? Is this the sort of person the government is hobnobbing with? Well, look, can I just say what we've got to be focused on is delivering results for the Australian community. This is a Team Australia moment, Alan. You would understand that. I mean, people are feeling very anxious and it doesn't matter if you're Labor or Liberal, right? It doesn't matter if you're Alan Jones or Graham Richardson. It doesn't matter if you're Mike Cannon Books or anybody else. We've got one job and that's to support our fellow okay. Australians at this time. And I make okay. no apologies for that. To pay sure, your tax. everyone's got yeah, to pay you can their taxes. Support the Australians, Josh, if they're paying taxes. You can't support Australians well, if no one's paying tax. Well, you remember that bloke Kerry Packer, you know, and he talked about mugs and taxes. Well, can I just tell you, everyone should pay their tax, and uh, we've oh, got to we've got to scoop it up. We've got to scoop it up because yeah. we're certainly spending it. <laughs> I know you are. Gina Reinhart paid three hundred and fifty-two million in company tax. In 2018, then state royalties on top of that. This bloke's doing a favour for the Prime Minister. I might add, he's also a belligerent critic of the Prime Minister. Josh, thank you for your time. It's very much appreciated. Good luck. A tough job. Good to no be with one's you. underestimating the difficulties you face, and we wish you well.